Impala here. I'm not working on the Chevy today or either of the Chevys. I'm not working on either of the Dodges. I'm actually working on a tractor. Wrong way. Um, this is a MTD, I don't know. It's 42 inch cut, uh, seven speed transmission, shift on the fly not the hydrostatic transmission. Um, so anyway, what I'm doing is I'm putting what they call the poor man's power steering in it just to make it a little easier to to turn. Um, not that it's that difficult. Not that it's needed. It's just maybe it'll make it a little easier. Maybe it won't. I don't even know if this will work. Uh, I've seen nobody on YouTube anyway um, put this call it a system on this tractor or any tractor like this I have taken it apart because I had to measure uh, one of the shafts to make sure that these parts would fit so what what I'm doing is let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit wrong way so right here, whoops. Right here we have the shaft that is connected to the tire to the wheel. Um, call it the spindle if you will. And it rides on straight metal right here. So when it turns back and forth, it's a, an actual metal to metal contact, which going this slow isn't that big a deal it'll last for a long time. It has lasted a long time. This isn't new, as you can tell by the bumps. Um, so what the the thing to do is to put um, bearings underneath it. And I'll show you what they look like. I'm so super prepared. What you get is, let me flip this around so I can see what I'm doing. Right here, this has some, uh, I'm not going to call them needle bearings because I'm not sure if that's the actual term of what they are, but it's almost like needle bearings. It's, it's bearings inside of here. And then you get two washers, oops, two washers. And so what you do is you sandwich the bearing in between the two washers and that rotates a lot easier. So the idea is to take this, put it right underneath here where my finger is and you'll see better later. Um, and it should make it easier. It does make it easier. Um, like I said, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to find out. If it does work, I guess I'm breaking ground. Um, so let's, let's get at it. And hopefully it works. Try to adjust this down a little bit. Oops. So I have a bottle jack right now because my floor jack is tucked away in the van because I've been working on somebody else's car. And um, no, I'm not videotaping it. Um, so what you got to do is you got to lift the car up. <laughs> got to lift the tractor up off the ground. And uh, to to get the spindle shaft that goes right through here. <clears throat> I'll jack it up a little bit, just to kind of take the weight off of it, and then I'll break these bolts free right here. So this is a, I guess a, like a pinch bolt, something for that effect. This side is totally different from the other side, um, the other side over there. And um, I'm not actually showing that, am I? Oh yes, a true professional at work. 
So I take the bolt, this bolt out right here, and it is pinching on the shaft that goes straight down. So I'll remove this. And yes, if I was doing this by myself, I would use uh, like an air tool or something. But you know, I'm not in a hurry. And I don't know what's going to happen on the other side because I only measured this side. What I had to do is I had to measure the spindle shaft that comes through here and make sure that that was three quarters of an inch as that is what these bearings are. So, you know, you need it to be that size, I guess. So, like I said, this was a pinch bolt basically. So I have to kind of wiggle this to open it up a little bit and then should be able to jack this up. See it's separating right here. Oops. So right here the shiny part wasn't showing before. There we go. So this shiny part right here wasn't there before. So what I'm doing is I'm jacking it up and the lower part of the, the shaft will come out the bottom. And then when that happens and basically put the bearings in and call it a day. Actually, that's incorrect. Let me pull this off first. Get that out of the way. So keep jacking it and uh, Hopefully this jack will go up high enough and allow it to drop off the bottom. You know, if I, if I did this full time, I'd have a professional photographer doing this, but, you know. So, you can see it's coming out here. Oh, maybe, yeah. Oh, so, it'll get up to a point and it'll just drop out. At least that's the plan. So what I had to do is I had to measure this part, make sure that this diameter was three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters, and um, to verify that those bearings would actually fit. That's what I did. So you got plastic crap all through here, which I'm not eliminating because, you know, maybe if somebody eventually down the road made a kit, maybe it would eliminate this bushing here and this bushing here, but this kit, like I said, I'm just hoping it works. Not sure if it's going to, but we'll see. So at the top of this was this, uh, like I'll call it a spacer. 
Um, I'm not sure if since I'm putting you know the bearing at the bottom here I'm not sure if the spacing is going to fit a as the thickness is right now uh, the width maybe the thickness cut you know whatever I might have to cut this down grind it down uh, so that it actually clears won't know until the end so this is pretty much it um, pretty much now all I have to do is put washer the bearing and then the washer uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put some lube on this some uh, bearing grease I have some synthetic bearing grease and I'll probably put it on the washers too so I'm going to do that and I'll be right back Get all those bearings greased up as well as you can. Don't need a lot of extra because uh, you don't want it to attract dirt and grease and everything. That probably wouldn't be the best thing. But like I said, it's not like this is taking a lot of weight or anything. So it's probably going to be okay. And the top washer. Now, wipe my hands down. Now we'll put it back together and we'll see if I have to cut anything off, shave that the spacer down at all. back up in there and we'll let this down see it pop up through here it just has to go all the way down and it's good so I think that that might be okay with that spacer. Um, let me grab a hammer real quick just to tap the plastic pushing down. Should be good. So all that I really need, where did I put it? Oh. All that really needs to happen is that that steering part has to come on here. Zoom. So the steering linkage just has to attach to here, and it's square, squared off. It's not sharp angles or anything, but it's it's square. So I'm gonna put some lube on this spacer on the inside and the top and bottom, and it looks like it's gonna be good. But I won't know until I clamp this sucker on.
know if you can tell from the camera, not right now, but when I had the white, when I had it white, I don't know if you could tell that the, uh, the line seems to be really out of whack, which again, doing three miles an hour isn't that big of a deal. But it will be something I'll see if I can figure out. Just snug this up. I don't know what the torque spec is, but I just snug it up so that it's good and tight. I'm happy with that. It's tight. It's holding the steering in. And uh, get the bottle jack out of the way. There you go. So one side's done. I don't have the parking brake set. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do the other side. And if I run into any issues, I'll come back and let you know as soon as I put it in. Alright, so I got them both done. The left side or the right side as we're looking at it right now was a little different. So, as I was kind of explaining before, this has this little pinch bolt right here. And that pinches that together. The other side did not have that. So it was two different two different setups completely. Where are you? Where am I? Oh there it is. Right there. Um I might have to take out a washer. Um, as it was kind of thick but I'm gonna try it and see I gotta mow probably tomorrow or something and I'll see how it is if it pops off for some reason hopefully I don't lose it it you know we'll see but it just pries off with the screwdriver probably loses all of its tension and then when I put it back on it's gonna pop off regardless um, it is all back together you can see the bearings right there, and sorry about that. Uh, where and right there. So we'll see how it goes. So, uh, oh yeah, like I was saying, if it is too, you know, if that's too thick, and it's not focusing. In, but if it's too thick, I can take out one or even both of the washers as the surfaces right here and the surface right here are pretty smooth. Um, and it would probably be okay to, to run it without washer. Um, like I said, it's not hard to turn now, but um, it would be nice if if it was nice and smooth and everything. So anyway, uh, it is done and I guess as far as this video goes, it is done. So I thank you for watching. Um, like I said, this is kind of not normal. I've only put out a what, handful of videos, but normally I, I'm working on the car and uh, but you know whatever I'm doing, I'm, I might just video it just for the hell of it. So you'll see the 62 maybe next, the Biscayne next. Um, I had started on putting a different distributor in it, but uh, ended up having problems with the fuel injection uh, ECU, had to be sent back to Holly, and they are supposed to be sending it back to me three weeks ago. Still haven't gotten it. They keep saying, well, it's on its way. It's on its way. So either that's going to be next or this will be next. Uh, back it up. It's a 96 Impala SS and it has no fuel pressure. So 
I'll be dropping the tank, the fuel tank, and see what I can do there. Anyway, if you like what you see, you know, maybe even subscribe. It doesn't really matter because, like I said, I'm not making any money off of this. And um, like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. That'd be kind of cool. Let me know, you know, if I, if I did something totally wrong. Or, you know, if I helped you, if you have questions, you know, maybe I can help you out. All right, Mr. Impala saying peace.